Hello dear friends. Today we are going to discuss the exponential and logarithmic functions. This is the fourth chapter in our book. Do you think there may be other functions which may not be expressed in terms of polynomials or rational functions? In the world of mathematics full of mystery, the answer is clearly yes. Exponentials and their inverses logarithmic functions are these kinds of functions. Let us investigate these functions which we come across in our daily life in the problems of radioactive decay, the population growth, the calculation of the magnitude of an earthquake, or the calculation of an uh, investment's uh, interest rate. So let us define the exponential function. The exponential function f of x equals a to the x is defined for positive values of a and a must be different than 1. The number a is called the the base of the exponential function. Now, what if the base is a equals 1? Then we get f of x equals 1 to the x and that's equal to 1, which is a constant function, apparently not an exponential function. Depending on what the value of a is, we can uh, investigate the graph of exponential function. For a greater than 1, the graph of the exponential function is an increasing function. So the exponential function increases from minus infinity to plus infinity. And when a is between 0 and 1, uh, the exponential function is, an, is a decreasing function, which decays as x gets bigger and bigger. <clears throat> exponential functions are very, very uh, fast-growing functions. When compared to polynomials, they grow extremely fast. And for this reason, let us just compare the functions 2 to the x and x cubed. As can be seen from this table, even when x, uh, the value of x is not very large, the exponential function is already much and much bigger than the polynomial function. <clears throat> so exponential functions uh, grow very, very rapidly. Let us try to plot the graph of the exponential function 2 to the x. Uh, if we create this table and if we insert some certain values of x into the function, we see that for x equals 0, the function takes the value uh, 1. For 1, 2, and 3, the function takes the value 2, 4, uh, and 8. And for negative uh, exponents like x equals minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3, we see that the function's value increases to 0. If we now plot all these points in the plane, we get the graph of the exponential function 2 to the x. Here, a is greater than 1, which is 2, a equals 2, so it's greater than 1. So this is an increasing function. If we, uh, <clears throat> if we repeat this procedure for the function g of x equals 1 over 2 to the x, we again create this table, but this time we see that the function's value uh, increases very rapidly as x <clears throat> as x gets smaller and smaller in the negative direction. So if we insert all these values in the uh, in the plane, in the, in the Cartesian coordinate system, we see that we have a decreasing exponential function. Uh, we may derive the following uh, conclusions from the previous graphs. When a is greater than 1, if x is less than y, then a to the x is less than a to the y. If a is between 0 and 1, when a, x is less than y, a to the x becomes greater than a to the y. This means these two, uh, these two conditions or these two situations means that the exponential function a to the x, whether a is greater than 1 or less than 1, it's a one-to-one -one function. So we may talk about the inverse of this function, which we are going to do in a couple of minutes. Now let's consider an example. Let us invest our money the amount of which is denoted by a at an interest rate of p percent for a certain period. At the end of the nth period, our money will become a times 1 plus p over 100 to the n. Assume that one year is divided by n periods. So what we are trying to achieve is this. If we make the period smaller and smaller and smaller, we sort of assume that we are going to make more money. So when one year is divided by n periods, interest rate for each period will be one, uh, 100 over n percent. At the end of first year, if we invest one liras, forget about our capital A, but if we invest one liras, we are going to earn one plus one over n to the n <clears throat> uh, liras. So let's have a look at this table. If the period is a monthly period, then the money we are going to get at the end of one year is 2.61 liras. If it's a weekly period, then we are going to get 2.69 liras. And if you go on like this, uh, at the end of one year, 
if the period is taken as a second, the capital at the end of the first year will be 2.718281 and so on and so forth liras. Now, this number 1 plus 1 over n to the n is approximately 2.7182 when n is very large, actually when n tends to infinity. This number was first used by Napier in his work in, uh, in around 1600s, but he used the letter B and it's Leonard Euler who introduced this number into the mathematics and called this number E, which is a very important number in mathematics and it is an irrational number. Now, uh, when we want to multiply, divide, exponentiate or take the averages of very, very large numbers, <clears throat> The calculations, uh, the calculations tends to get very, very difficult. Scottish mathematician Napier introduced a tool to deal in uh, to deal with such cases. This tool is now called the logarithm. The logarithm, which is the inverse of the exponential function, is uh, denoted by log a and is defined from zero comma infinity to the real line. And log a uh, log x to the base a equals y is defined in terms of the inverse of the uh, exponential function a to the y equals x. So uh, if we take a, the base of the exponential in this case, as e, we get the we get this we, we rename the logarithmic function and we call it the ln function ln of x and we call this function the natural logarithm. Let us give some examples how the logarithmics work. Now, uh, let us calculate logarith uh, logarithm of 64 to the base 4. And this is 3, as we see from the screen. Why is it 3? Because 4 to the 3 is 64. Now, if we try to calculate logarithm of 1 over 10,000, we get minus 4. All you have to do is to follow the pre uh, previous example. And logarithm of 1024 to the base 2 is 10. If you take the uh, ln, not the logarithm, but, but, but ln of e to the 7, since the base of this uh, special logarithmic function is e, we get the result 7. Now, let us investigate the graph of the logarithmic function. Now, if a is greater than 1, we have an increasing logarithmic function. If a is between 0 and 1, we have a decreasing logarithmic function, the graphs of which you can see on the screen. In data measurements, logarithm is employed to, uh, to denote very, very large or very, very small numbers. And it helps us to plot, the, uh, plot these quantities on an equal spaced uh, scale. The large qu quantities are represented in terms of their, their logarithms. This will enable a comfortable visualization of the quantities in question, such as, such as the the decibel of a sound, the volume of a sound, the pH scale of water, or the magnitude of an earthquake. These are all denoted by the logarithm to the base 10. Now I try to summarize this chapter as short as possible. So uh, I hope that you'll go and read the book. There are many more examples and there are very nice exercises. I'll see you in the next, uh, in the next lecture. Bye bye.